I want to talk a little about lips. We're really excited about lips because it's a portion of the face that um, many of us have treated for years, but we have a new option. There's a recent FDA approval of a new product, and that product has now been tested safe and effective for treatment of the lips. So I want to tell you a little bit about it, but I also want to tell you about why we treat the lips. I'm always interested in the why we, behind why we do something and why do women treat lips. So let me tell you a little bit about the history of lips, the science of lips, and the beauty of lips. We did a study, it wasn't scientific, but we asked 100 women, if there's one thing in your purse when you go out at it that makes you feel confident, what do you think it is? What is that one thing in your purse that makes you feel confident when you go out at it? And the majority of our women, you know what they said? Lip gloss or lipstick. The number one item in the purse that gave them confidence went out at it. We asked the same question to men, and what do you think they said? Yep, hundred dollar bill. Yes, men and women still are different, and we are different in our lips too. There's a distinction between the lips of men and the length lips of women. Areas where we don't differ is the musculature of our lips, and this is the musculature surrounding the lips, and it's it's something it's a, we call a sphincter muscle. There's a muscle around the lips that keeps the mouth pursed. That's the importance of the lips, and that helps for oral competency so food doesn't come out, and so you can speak. So there's lots of benefits to the lips for functional purposes, for feeding ourselves, and for talking, for communicating. But there's more that the lips do than just that. Lips are what we call a sexually dimorphic trait. It's something that is different in a woman, in a woman than a man. A woman's lips are viewed differently than a man's, and they have different purposes sexually than a man's. So if, whether it's Greta Garbo or Marilyn Monroe, dark, thick, dark, highly differentiated lips from the skin is important. It makes a female face more attractive. This was a study done by Russell. This was done back in the 90s. And what he was able to prove is that if you darken the lips, then the skin looks lighter. And if you increase the contrast between the skin and the lips, it's more attractive for a female, but less attractive for a male. So this is a, a female and a male, and if you see the male, when you, have, when you start to darken the lips on a male, it becomes much less attractive. So we like dark, thick lips on a female, but we don't like that same thing on a male. It makes them less attractive. So filling lips on a male is probably not necessarily attractive. I'm not sure many people think that Bruce Jenner's lips, like this, is attractive. So generally speaking, it's a treatment for women, not for men. Are lips a sexual organ? Well, yes, of course, to some extent, and the Greeks called it the most erogenous zone of the face. And there's some evidence that lips are really important to female sexuality. We also think that women with thick, dark red lips are more attractive. Women's lips are made up of tubercles, and tubercles are what the, um, it's from an embryological term, and these are the, the more, the, what makes up the lips, and a woman's got three tubercles on the top, two on the bottom, and some women have these thick, thicker lips. Other women have thin lips. We're all born with different lips. What's interesting, there is one study out there that correlates the size of the lip, the upper lip in particular, to sexual satisfaction. Now, it's one trial, but it is awfully interesting to note that the two have been correlated in at least one trial. So lips as a sexual organ, as an indicator of sexuality, has been associated and described many times over and over. In fact, a female's lips likely swell ever so slightly when aroused and also when fertile. And signs of fertility are passed subconsciously, even in the lips. So lips swell slightly, a female's fertile, a male or an observer who wants to know if that female's fertile, in theory, can see it just by looking at their lips. And that's all perceived subconsciously because these are signs of fertility. And fertility is youthful and fertility is healthy, and fertility is beauty throughout nature. That's what we find beautiful. Lips are part of that equation. And maybe it's one of the reasons why women in the Mercy Tribes of Ethiopia put these large 14 centimeter plates in their lip, because what they're doing is they're expanding their lips to, sh to highlight, accentuate fertility. Now, of course, this is unnatural appearing. It's not attractive to us, but in their tribes, it may be very attractive. And they may look at where we put fillers in our lips and think that's unattractive. So everything's relative to where you're at. So the lips are a very, very sensitive organ, as you know, perhaps the second most sensitive place in the body. It's highly sensitive to the lips. But that's pretty good because lips have another function. We kiss. And it's a way we sample each other. And it's a way of creating closeness. And yes, it's a way to swap pheromones. We swap our different chemical messengers to see if we're a match. And kissing is a way that we do that. So there's so many added benefits 
to sexuality, to fertility, to mating with the lips. And lips have evolved in humans to express emotions. Slight changes in the lip completely alter the perception of someone's appearance. We make judgments based on people's lips and their mouths. And this has been proven in multiple studies. When we can tell if someone's angry just by looking at their expression on their face and looking how their lips are pursed. Or we can tell if they're happy if they smile. In this study done by Walker and Vetter in Journal of Vision in um, 2007, he was able to show that minor changes in the face, ever so slightly changes, one that are almost difficult to see, completely alter your perception of somebody. You don't see these changes real closely unless you look real, real, real carefully. Then you can see these changes, but these changes are so minor, they affect your subconscious mind, and these changes are what makes the face more attractive. So if I show you these two pictures, I can say is one happier than the other, you usually can tell that just by a small little window of their face. You can tell by looking at the corner of the mouth if one's happier than the other, and all it is is a one millimeter change in the corner of the mouth. So by smiling, it may affect our emotions. So the more we smile, the happier we become. And there's lots of evidence now to link expressions and emotions. So if you smile, you become happy. If you frown, you become angry. So if we can make the lips fuller, more friendly, and more of an upturn to the lateral corners of the mouth, we may make someone look friendlier, happier, and actually become happier. So now we know why. Let's talk about selfies a little bit. I find this very interesting, this duck lip. Many of you know Kim Kardashian. She has a wonderful duck lip. And as do many young kids, including my kids. Look in the selfie picture, how the lips change based on the angle of the camera. Okay. So the important when selfies are being taken, it's quite interesting because lots of women say, lots of kids, lots of people are learning the art of taking a selfie. The position of the camera has a significant influence on your appearance. And many people know, my daughters included, that if you put the selfie, if you take the phone and put it high up and look down onto yourself, the lower third of the face looks smaller, the lips by proportion look bigger. And that's an attractive look, especially if you duck lip it. If you come deep below the face, looking up, then the lower third of the face looks much larger, and that's an unattractive look for most females. Women don't want to have a bottom-heavy lower third of their face. And in that respect, the whole lip area and the whole lower third of the area looks big and looks out of proportion to the upper third of the face, and that's a relatively unattractive look for a female. And there's measurements of where the lips should sit in the face and how, what proportion of the face the lips should take up. Many of us know these measurements in plastic surgery, and some don't, but many of us do. And we can take these measurements and we can show you exactly how big your lips should be and what portion of your face your lips should take up in order to be the ideal mathematical formula. These formulas go way back to Pythagorean. They go way back, the Egyptians do this and Da Vinci knew about these formulas. So big lips, attractive lips, that are at the right size look natural and make a face look more feminine and more attractive by augmenting the lips. We can also improve symmetry. People are asymmetric by augmenting the lips. The key here is that it looks natural. You should not be able to tell something was done. If you can tell it was done, it wasn't done right, but when lips are done well, there's slight alterations in the lips and the face just becomes instantly more attractive. So there's an upper vermilion and a lower vermilion and we treat them both. The upper vermilion is the red upper part of the lip. The lower vermilion is the lower red part of the lip. The cupid's bow, the corners of the mouth, these are all areas that we have to treat separately and everyone's a little bit different in these areas. Now as we age, the upper lip gets longer and you can see how the upper lip extends. That extension of the upper lip is a telltale sign of aging. And you also lose the fine white border of the upper lip. By losing that fine white border, you start to get the radial lip lines or smoker's lines as we call them. This is the muscles of the underlying lip showing that at this is a cross section of a histological slide. It's, a, it's, it's used for under a microscope. And what we're seeing here is the different layers of the lip. And what's really interesting is that the lip when we're young has a J shape, and as we get older it has an I shape, it elongates. So the upper lip becomes longer, and that is a sign of aging. And even on MRIs, this is a radiographic image that shows the lengthening of the upper lip that occurs with time. So it's important that we don't that lots of filler isn't put to the lip, because too much filler in the lip actually makes the lip look too fat and unattractive. It's actually a length to shorten the lip. This doesn't look right to me. Too much fill in the lip doesn't look good. So I think that this is not the most appropriate way to treat the lips. So it's important that we treat the lips because lips along with thinning gray hair 
and wrinkles are the three signs that subconsciously tip you off that someone's aging. So lips are really important to tipping off unknowing observers. Why do we wear lipstick? Well, there's a reason behind the lipstick because the lipstick makes the lips, the lips red, thicker, darker, increase the contrast between the lips and the surrounding skin, which makes a female look more youthful, more fertile, more vital. If you have good vascularity, then your lips are also red and plump also. So we can see that enhancing the lips ever so slightly, even with just lip gloss, can make the lips look more attractive. But it's not just the red lip, it's also surrounding. All around the lip, there are multiple other portions of the, the we call it perioral complex, from the chin region to the, lower, the skin of the lower lip, to the, to the skin above the lip, to the folds around the lips. All these areas contribute to someone looking a little bit older. So if we treat just the lips and not the surrounding areas, it, it's out of context, it's out of proportion. So it's important that the whole area is treated at one time. And that's something that we address in each patient individually. And as we age, we also lose bone. So we lose bone, so our, our nose falls, our mouth goes back, we lose dentition. These are all things that cause us to age. But uh, this is an interest I saw, is that when we treat the nose, by treating the nose, we are also able to make the lip look bigger. So the nose and the chin and the, and the lips all are correlated. One is not without the other. So we have to think about the whole holistic version of the face when we treat it. It's not just the lips alone. So even just treating by the nose, we can make the lips look bigger. And so all these areas, the lines around the mouth, the lines around the lips, the muscles all have to be treated. And even these barcode lines, the barcode lines are those smokers lines. It's important to treat those and unfortunately the products that just got FDA approved, Russell and Silk, is used to treat those barcode lines. So it has been FDA approved to treat that area and show statistically significant improvement in that area. So we are now treating that area effectively with these treatments. Another option is to place neuromodulators around the lips. That's not an FDA approved indication, however we do it on occasion and this helps to reduce some of the fine lines around the lips as well. I published a paper on this a few years ago that showed a small amounts of neuromodulators around the lips can make a significant improvement. And you can see those lips get better around the mouth. And we can also treat what we call pu de orange, which is the wrinkling of the chin. So it's the whole perioral complex, the lips, the wrinkles, the folds, and when we treat all those areas, the changes are subconsciously admitted. You should not be able to see these changes. They're mild changes, they're hard to see, but they're there, and it makes a significant improvement. The filler usually goes into the lip. It goes into, near the, between the muscle and the subcutaneous tissues of the lip. That's important for the doctor who's placing it there. Before fillers, the lips are wrinkled. These are histograms showing how the lips are wrinkled. And then after we put fillers in, the lips look nice and full, and you can see the two different versions of the lip under a microscope and then under um, and then in reality so the lip gets fuller less wrinkles that's one of the benefits of putting filler in the lips too it's not just augmenting it or enhancing it you also get rid of some of the wrinkles within the lip that makes the lip look fuller more fertile more robust so treating lips can give a nice improvement in the lips the key though is to treat the whole area to keep it natural and make it look make it look real and make it look good and if we do that then we know that we can make a female often feel better about herself because the number one thing that she has in her purse that makes her feel confident when she goes out at night is her lip gloss. So lips are important to many, many women's self-esteem. Thanks for listening.